know, it's always a pleasure coming back to Triple IT. Thank you, PJN. You know, I've been coming here for the last eight years, and uh, PJN doesn't invite me anymore. I also have to tell you, either he's too bored with me, or <laughs> I don't know. Is there a problem that we need to talk about? <laughs> I'm glad we got that. Sorry. You'll be here every week. Now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not doing any guest lectures, but nevertheless, <laughs> I'm not competent enough. So, uh, thank you, PJN. Thank you to the entire family of Triple IT for having us, uh, for always, uh, you know, welcoming us, for being so warm. Uh, in this cold weather, I think we all need it, so thank you very much for that. Nivriti, um, thank you for all your support, for your unstinted backing of uh, the mission or the Telangana Artificial Intelligence Mission. We spoke about it a few years ago, and then since then you've, you've been really driving this along with other partners. Thank you very much for your unstinted backing, for your wholehearted support. Um, Suraj, we all know Uber's commitment, uh, like you said, to safety and also to the city of Hyderabad because uh, you know your second largest campus in the world is right here in Hyderabad and I do keep uh, you know I keep thinking I keep uh, imagining that whatever you do uh, in days to come again you will be doing it in Hyderabad and thank you thank you for being a part of this Rama Devi Garu who's leading our uh, emerging technologies wing ma'am uh, you've been a terrific terrific leader thank you very much um, of course uh, to Hemanji and also Vinod Garu who is representing the TSRTC, I thank them also uh, for their uh, support and for their, for their backing. Now, one thing that uh, I am reminded of today, um, you know, when I listen in to all the amazing things that technology can help us with, is what Honorable Chief Minister keeps telling us. Each and every time, either myself or, you know, uh, Jayesh or one of us tells him about this fancy new technology that's in town, or fancy new technology that is around the corner, he always has only one question. He says, listen, I I, am not a technocrat myself, I am not a technologist per se, but what is it that this technology can do in terms of helping the common man, helping the man on the ground, in terms of the societal impact? Kya karega hai technology? Ye bata. That is what he keeps saying. And today, when I am really delighted, I am excited, you know, to, to basically be able to answer you know, uh, you know, some of those concerns. I'd like to thank all of you, of course, you know, uh, uh, for inviting me to the launch of this INAI. The applied research being undertaken by INAI uh, is certainly helpful, helpful for not just Telangana, but for the entire country as well. And also, of course, to keep Telangana in the, uh, you know, center and uh, get to keep, you know, to, to ensure that Telangana remains the epicenter of these efforts. I would of course, congratulate Triple IT on, uh, you know, PJN was just joking. He was saying a lot of people confuse uh, the names, Triple IT and IIT. You know, which one, uh, which one of us should be taking it as an insult or a, or a compliment is what he said. I think you should take it as a huge compliment, PJN, because uh, Indian Institute of Technology, uh, you know, was conceptualized as a premier institute. The fact that Triple IT Hyderabad today is rated much above many, many IITs in India is a great, great compliment. And uh, I could hear the pain in your voice when you said uh, we are self-sustaining. Uh, <laughs> and I could also hear the pain when you said the government only gave me land, nothing else. <laughs> I promise you one thing, he was, he was just whispering in my ear that he needs some support for quantum computing labs that he's setting up. We will support you fully. I, ho I will assure you. I, I will ensure that you get that, uh, you know, money that you require to do a nice quantum computing facility right here. And when Nivriti was mentioning, uh, you know, that uh, a government hai dheere hota hai kaam, she was talking about Karnataka government, not us. <laughs> Trust me, that's the government, uh, that's the city that she lives in. So she was talking about them, not us, right? <laughs> Haan, say. Because I, I also was very, uh, listening in very carefully when she said uh, road safety and all. She said, Nagpur mein roads theek hai, Bangalore mein worse hai. She didn't mention Hyderabad, so I'm guessing we are somewhere in between. <laughs> right, Nivriti? Somewhere in between. Pakka. So, um, all in all, I think what I really liked about, you know, uh, what was mentioned earlier is how technology can be used, leveraged to save lives. Essentially, that's what it's about. I mean, la save lives, improving standards of living, improving, you know, you know uh, our, our urban infrastructure, improving our road safety, ensuring that we do things right. I mean, ensuring governments improve their uh, standards of functioning, so to speak. 
and as we all know gartner's 2022 ceo survey also indicates that ai is the top priority for business leaders for the third year in a row in fact back in 2020 when government of telangana had declared um, 2020 as a year of ai little did we know that covid was lurking around the corner but we had a very ambitious agenda but nevertheless in fact uh, we went through the whole year doing multiple ai events and intel was of course a key part of uh, many of those events so ai and how it can be leveraged uh, for the benefit of each and every person in the society it could it could be a it could be a farmer it could be a technologist it could be a doctor it could be somebody else everybody in fact can use ai and in fact um, covid has also shown us that ai and the power of uh, ai and how it can really help even the governments is something that we have truly appreciated over the last couple of years since ai acts as a new factor of production niti aayog estimates that ai is expected to raise india's annual gva growth rate by 1.3% resulting in an addition of almost 957 billion dollars to india's economy by 2020 2035 which is uh, 15% higher gross value added which is an gva is obviously as many of you would know is a very close approximation of gdp so almost 957 billion being added you know we keep hearing about the 5 trillion economy i think 957 billion coming in from the power of ai is a huge huge uh, potential for india to latch on and every state in india irrespective of uh, you know what our challenges are has to latch on to this opportunity has to ensure as uh, nevrithi was pointing out to as uh, has to aspire to be the leader in terms of adoption of these technologies realizing this economic potential of ai telangana became the first state to initiate a focused effort with the la launch of ai framework in 2020 under this framework we have launched number of pro number of programs and uh, we've been playing an active role uh, and have been playing the role of an enabler for the ai ecosystem we had set up the telangana ai mission called as a team a dedicated institution in partnership with nascom to drive all ai initiatives in the state in fact uh, nivrithi is also a member of team which is a governing council and has been offering strategic leadership as well a very important initiative of team has been the rev up accelerator which is currently supporting 80 plus uh, M, uh, mvp stage ai startups in a bid to generate unicorns over the coming years since availability of skilled manpower is critical to the growth of ai ecosystem the government has also taken up skilling programs for students and fac uh, and faculties uh, ai ml deep learning etc all of these uh, are being done in association with corporations like ibm intel microsoft and nascom future skills over the past couple of years around 25000 plus students and 4500 plus faculties have been trained in such programs anchored by telangana academy for skills and knowledge task which is a government entity now the government is also further ambitious this year and seeks to train at least 100000 youth in high school in foundation ai courses and would be glad to partner with intel under its ai for youth program Now, data has is has is been mentioned is a core of is at the core of ai and mckinsey actually estimates the digital transformation in agriculture alone could unlock a 70 billion dollar in indian agriculture sector therefore the government has also initiated focused efforts on data enablement in agriculture we recently released an agriculture data management policy to enable protected sharing of both personal and non personal data since government of india's personal data protection bill is yet to become an act the admp fills this critical gap with the goal of agri tech innovation and development of custom solutions for the state of telangana that would benefit the farmers we have also initiated the development of an agricultural data exchange uh, which could be a game changer that allows the easy and protected and secure sharing of all agri related data duly taking the consent of the data owners the innovators shall be able to easily test and build their solutions on top of the data access through adex let me just give you a fascinating example of what data can do in my constituency in sirsila we have a remote village which is possibly about 165 170 kilometers away in a tribal habitation a place called virnapalli which is now a mandal headquarters which has recently been recognized as a block headquarters but it was actually a village you know um, about 4 years ago 
my honorable mp the local mp then it was mr vinod kumar he had adopted uh, virnapalli so we had traveled there in fact using his uh, mp funds he had set up a very interesting facility uh, you know a, 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 a small facility where he wanted to use technology for the benefit of the farmers in fact um, he had consulted a technology company which again of course was using ai even uh, you know four years back in trying to help the farmers you know understand the pest and help them understand the soil fertility etc etc so we were there to inaugurate the facility and these were all farmers who were possibly not so literate possibly semi literate if you ask me so we were there myself and uh, the honorable mp and a bunch of officers we were all there so just like how we did today we took a remote uh, we were you know we 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 clicked the remote the television set opened and then there was a there was a website which we had to uh, click open and uh, we were trying to basically navigate through the website so hum log koshish kar rahe the we were trying to understand how the website and we were trying to also explain to the farmers how the website would help them how the app would help them you know there were two things one a website and another an app when we were that was the first time i was seeing the website so obviously i was not very familiar and i was uh, trying to understand there was a trainer who was trying to uh, uh, you know one of the faculty who was trained there trying to explain to me ki agar aap if you can just click a picture of the pest it basically uh, you know will run through using ai as a platform and ml um, basically show you the show the farmer in telugu what the pest is and what needs to be done right so he was trying to show me he was trying to navigate through the website wahan pe jo kisan the jinko already uh, training kiya gaya tha they were also there in the room about 10 15 of them so the guy who was actually trying to show me the website he was having a tough time navigating through the website but this farmer who was standing right next to me wo keh rahe the ki nahi nahi wahan nahi next window mein jao wahan se niche jao go to the drop down i was like wow this guy really knows what he's saying so i said ye aapko kaise malum hai he said sir we've been using that for a month or so now and of course the formal launch is today but we've been using it for almost a month so soft launch has already happened and he was actually guiding the trainer ki aap yahan jao yahan jao yahan jao fir wahan ja click karo fir ja ke aapko wo aa jayega to i was zapped i said what have you matlab what is your formal training what did you study he said uh, 10th or plus 2 he's not somebody who's very well conversant in english he's not somebody who really understands a line of code he's not somebody who's possibly trained uh in any kind of uh, you know ai or uh, you know ai module or uh, he knows nothing i'm sure about ml but the fact is when a farmer when he sees value in the product that is being put out in front of him and when he understands the power of uh you know leveraging technology for his benefit i think they'll latch on to it very very quickly the beautiful thing about india and our citizens is you know i i when i was in the us when i was doing my masters there and when i used to come back to india to visit my family and friends i always used to be amazed because wahan hum log mote mote wo motorola wale aur nokia ke phone set use karte the 98 99 ki baat kar raha hu main when i was there 99 2000 possibly so we used to have these wahan pe verizon wahan pe kya at&t ke baki companies the aur wahan pe they used to bundle those packages the telecom telcos there used to bundle services and offerings and they used to offer these big mota handset so as a student obviously i didn't have money so i used to buy one of those nice handsets the big one but when i used to land in india and come and see my friends here they all had these sleek handsets i was like what is happening america to thoda humse zyada ameer hai to ye log kya kar rahe hain yahan pe matlab the point i'm trying to make is indians have always been good india as a country and the citizens have always been always been good when it comes to adoption of technology if we realize the value you know we, you know right in front of our eyes especially my generation which is uh, witness to the telecom revolution for those of you who are born after 2000 you would not understand what i'm saying but prior to that i'm sure pjn would understand <laughs> you know there was a time there was a time when uh, you know to get a landline connection at home was a huge humongous task it was an achievement of sorts i remember a time when ghar pe agar phone nahi hota and those of you who speak telugu will understand pp bolte hain pakkinti phone you know you, you have uh, you have a phone in the next door neighbor so whenever you give out your phone number you would give it out as pp right so to get a phone was a task you needed an mp's recommendation letter you needed to go to the bsnl do a nice 
you know, uh, um, ego massage there so as to get a phone connection and then eventually the phone set would come. You would pick up every day if you're a kid, if you're enthused about a new phone at home, you would hear for the, wait for the ringtone. It's not happening. You remember, uh, for those of you who are possibly from my generation, you would also remember trunk calls. You know, we used to call the exchange, the exchange fellow. There was only one in Hyderabad, I think, Lagdikapul, which is where it is, even now. Uh, you know, we used to call them, book trunk call to Sangareddy, book trunk call to Karim Nagar, etc., etc. But see what has happened right in front of our eyes. The landline is gone, it's passe now. Nobody wants a landline phone anymore at home. After the telecom, you know, uh, you know, uh, sector has been opened up by government of India. The kind of revolution we have witnessed right in front of our eyes. Today, each and every one of us has at least one mobile phone for sure. Some of us have two. Some of us have three. You know, Pegasus and other things, uh, you know, have, do take a toll. So all of these things, you know, that have come in right in front of our eyes, how technology has really transformed our lives in terms of communications, in terms of being able to be in touch with what's happening across the world, etc., and all the other technologies that have revolutionized the way we think. You know, COVID was a great example. We've seen, you know, uh, some enterprises which have shown the world that uh, you need not be in a small town or a big town to be able to work from home. You could even be working from your village. To, as long as technology and as long as connectivity is there, I think you're fine.